Welcome back. This is a video serving as an introduction to the wide world of cancer treatment. Here I'm going to outline the, what the main types of cancer treatment are, the main aims of cancer treatment, who's involved in making the decisions and carrying out those treatments, how different types of cancer treatments are used with each other, and other important factors in making decisions about cancer treatments. So first I'd like to talk about what treatments are available, also known as treatment modalities. Generally, these fall into three categories, surgery, radiotherapy, and medical therapies. The first category, surgery, aims to physically cut out the tumour. In general, it's used as a curative treatment, but can also be used in certain circumstances as a palliative treatment in order to improve quality of life. For instance, if a tumour is causing significant symptoms that could potentially be helped, like perhaps if a tumour was causing a bowel obstruction or was pressing on the spinal cord. Radiotherapy uses targeted radiation to kill cancer cells. It involves using high energy rays like x-rays or electrons to kill cancer cells. It can be given externally by a machine to direct rays at cancerous tissue or internally by placing radioactive material in the body near cancerous cells. Medical therapy is a broad category that involves medications given to kill cancer cells. Most commonly this is in the form of what we call cytotoxic chemotherapy which simply put are drugs that kill fast dividing cells. Medical therapies, however, also include other medical treatments that don't necessarily involve cytotoxic drugs. Examples include hormone therapies, antibody therapies, immunotherapies, which are aimed at helping the immune system fight off the cancer, and targeted therapies, which are small molecules that are designed to target and inhibit mutated proteins that are found in specific cancer cells. Next, I want to talk about who's responsible for delivering cancer treatments. It isn't just one person who is responsible for this, but rather groups of clinicians and professionals who meet together in what is known as a multidisciplinary team, or MDT. This will involve oncologists who are medical doctors who specialise in the treatment of cancer, surgeons who offer surgery to cut tumours out, Radiologists and histopathologists who provide information about the staging and the types and grades of cancer to allow the others to make decisions about the appropriate treatment. Medical doctors, for example, gastroenterology doctors or respiratory doctors who will have an input into the diagnostic process and some of the treatment decisions. And also, where appropriate, palliative care doctors might be involved. Specialist nurses who are heavily involved in the communication side as well as delivering and monitoring treatment are also involved in the MDT. So when talking about the intention of treatment, there are broadly two categories, and these are curative and palliative. Curative treatment, also known as radical treatment, as you can probably imagine, has the aim of curing the disease, in other words, getting rid of it completely. Palliative treatment, on the other hand, accepts that in your patient that the disease cannot realistically be cured. This might be because of how far the disease is spread or because the patient is not fit enough to undergo radical treatment. It aims to use treatments to improve symptom control and thereby improve quality of life and to extend life. It's worth noting that these things do not necessarily always equate and that symptom control is really the most important part and extending life isn't always worthwhile if the patient's quality of life is affected too badly by the interventions that we choose to give. Another important consideration in the approach to treatment is the order in which treatments are given. You'll commonly hear technical terms used to describe this. The terms usually describe when a treatment is given with reference to the main or the primary treatment. Neoadjuvant means before the main treatment. For instance, if you were to plan to cut a tumour out with surgery, you might want to give some radiotherapy or even chemotherapy beforehand to try and shrink the tumour down so it's easier to cut out. Adjuvant treatments, on the other hand, are given after the main treatment to reduce the risk of the cancer returning. For example, adjuvant chemotherapy might be used after cutting the tumour out with surgery to prevent the formation of secondary tumours. 
So next I want to talk about how treatments are selected. We can think of this in terms of three main groups of factors. Tumour, treatment and patient factors. The first is tumour, as in what is the type of tumour and how far is it spread? This will often dictate whether we can have a chance of curing the cancer or whether we need to take a palliative approach. In general, cancers that have spread are rarely curable. Treatment factors will often depend on how available a treatment is and how likely it is to work as intended without causing significant side effects. Finally, but often most importantly, are patient factors. This will include how fit a patient is. For example, in some cases the most ideal treatment might be radical surgery to try and cure the tumour. But what if the patient has other medical problems, like heart failure and lung disease, which means they're most likely not able to survive a surgery, or if they do, they might have significant side effects. Often oncologists will use something called the ECOG performance status as a guide to see how, patient, uh, how fit a patient is. Cancer treatments in general and particularly curative treatments are often very physically demanding. If someone's already very unfit, these are often likely to only make their overall physical condition significantly worse. Performance status is ranked from zero to five, where zero is someone who's fully active with no restrictions at all. One is someone who's restricted in strenuous activity only, like brisk walking, climbing stairs, that kind of thing. Two is where people are restricted, but still up and about for over 50% of the day. Three is where they're restricted and up and about for less than 50% of the day. Four is where they're bed bound. Performance status also has a grade five, which means dead, which I can only assume is useful in terms of research rather than clinical practice. Finally, the patient's wishes as to preferences over treatment are also vital. They must be fully informed of all the risks of treatment, the likelihood of success, and decide for themselves whether they would like to have the treatment. So in summary, the main questions that are raised when choosing cancer treatments are, what type of cancer are we dealing with? Usually this is found out from histology results, from biopsies. How far has it spread, i.e. what stage is it, which we usually find out from scans. Then we ask what treatments are available, how effective they are, and what the likely side effects might be. And importantly, what patient factors are important, what treatments are the patients fit for, and what are their own preferences. With this information in mind, we have to decide whether the cancer is curable, or whether symptom control as part of palliative care should be the aim. Appropriate treatments are selected. These might be surgery, radiotherapy or medical therapy. And then the order, i.e. is that therapy going to be used as the main therapy, primary therapy, or before, neoadjuvant, after, adjuvant, or at the same time, concurrent. Thanks again for listening. As usual, your comments and questions are more than welcome. And please hit subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. Thank you.